All right, folks, right on. I am John Crane. Welcome to my shop. And today I have some tool tips and tricks for you, specifically about the drill bits that you see before me. Now, I feel that all these drill bits are essential for the kind of work that I do. And I think by the end of this video, if you don't already own these drill bits, I think you're gonna wanna go out and buy these to add these to your toolbox or put these in your shop. So I'm gonna go over each one of these one by one. So let's get started. All right, now when I hear the words drill bit, I immediately think of the classic twist drill. Now they usually come in an index like this or in a small case like this that you can get at your big box stores. Now usually these bits are made out of high speed steel. And a lot of times they have a coating on them such as black oxide or cobalt or titanium. And those coatings are usually there to make the bit last a little bit longer or to go through some harder materials such as hardened steel. Now nine times out of 10, this is going to be the bit that you're going to reach for because they can go through a multiple of materials such as steel, wood, aluminum, plastic, and they come in a huge array of sizes from very tiny to very big. Okay, if you look at this stair chart, all of these sizes on here are drill bit sizes. Now you can see they come in fractional sizes, they come in lettered sizes, they come in numbered sizes from very small to very big. Okay, let's take a quick look at the geometry of the drill bit. So this section right here is the body of the drill bit. And these right here are the flutes of the drill bit. Now this is used for ejecting the chip as it is being cut. So if we look at the tip of the drill bit, each side here is ground to 59 degrees. It's 118 degrees combined. Right here is the cutting lip and here is another cutting lip. So that does all your cutting. So as you're turning this into a piece of material, the cutting lip is shaving the material and it is ejecting that material right through the flute up and out. Now, if we look at the tip, here is our point. This is also known as the web. And if you're using a large drill bit like this, it's good to use a pilot bit before using this drill bit. Usually smaller bits up to a half an inch don't need a pilot bit, but when you get into larger bits like this, it's good to use a pilot bit this size or bigger. Now when starting a drill bit in wood, sometimes it's nice to use an awl to make a little center point for the drill to ride in. Now this is not always necessary in wood, but it helps to guide that drill bit. Now, when you're using metal, that's a different story. That's nice to use a center punch because your drill bit can skate around. So on this piece of aluminum, or even if this was steel, I'll always use a center punch to make a little dimple and then drill my hole. Okay, the speed at which you run these drill bits is very important. If you have a small drill bit, you can run it pretty fast. If you have a larger drill bit, you have to run it quite a bit slower. And same goes for material. So if you have a soft material such as wood, you can run the drill bit faster as opposed to something like steel where you have to slow the drill bit down. And you can see on this chart, this has speeds for different types of drill bits. This is just a general rule of thumb type chart. There are more in-depth charts on the subject. Okay, the next type of bit that I wanna show you is called a spade bit. Now these types of bits have been around forever. Here's an older style here, and you can see it has a cutting edge right here and right here, and it's got these little wings for defining the hole as you cut through. This one right here has a screw, and that helps pull this drill bit through the wood. Now a lot of times these are used for going through studs, for wiring or water pipes and plumbing. And these work very well. They are quite crude when they go through the board. When they come out the backside, there is a lot of blowout. Now to prevent that, you can clamp a board to the backside of the board that you're drilling through, and that will prevent the blowout. But when you're doing plumbing and wiring, it really doesn't matter for that type of blowout inside the wall. Okay, the next bit up is known as an auger or a ship's auger, classically used in building ships. 
And this is typically seen now used by electricians and plumbers for running wire and pipe. And these drill through wood great. Typically, I like to use a drill that has a handle on it when I'm using an auger like this. But now there is a much better bit that I like to use that is called a speed bore bit. And this is great. These drill through wood incredibly fast. They're super sharp. They have a screw on the tip that pulls this bit right through the wood. Okay, next up are Forstner bits. Now these are a much more refined version of a spade bit. And if you look at this, it has two cutting lips and it has a real defined edge. These will drill very precision holes. A lot of times I'm using these to drill hinge cup holes for European hinges and cabinets. Oftentimes I'm also using these to drill the pocket holes for latch plates for door hardware when I'm hanging a door. Now these will also drill a hole with much less splintering than other drill bits, but there will be a lot of blowout if you go through the back of a board. It is good to back the back of the board with another board and then drill through to prevent that splintering and that blowout. Okay, another bit which is a cousin of the Forstner bit, is this Milwaukee switchblade bit. Now these bits are used mostly in plumbing for supply and drainage lines. It's called switchblade because you can switch out the blade. You can also switch out the screw here that pulls this through the wood. Usually you're going through framing material. Now this is a very aggressive bit. This goes through very fast and it's just great for plumbers and electricians of the sort. You definitely want to be using a drill that has a handle attachment on the side. These generate a lot of torque, and if you hit something and this drill bit gets stuck, it can wrap up your arms and wrists and twist them all around. So you definitely want to have a handle on your drill when drilling through studs. Okay, up next are hole saws. Now these are basically a saw wrapped in a circle and then put on this arbor. Now this arbor has a quarter inch pilot bit and then you insert this into the hole saw, turn it in and when you do, there's these two little tangs that pop up and that locks it into these holes right here and keeps that hole saw from spinning on the arbor. And you just pop that in like that and you're all set to go. Now again with these hole saws there is a lot of torque generated and you want to use a drill motor that has a handle on the side because if this gets stuck in anything it's going to turn that drill motor around it's going to twist up your wrists and hands and you can really get hurt if you don't have that handle and sometimes even if you do have that handle you want to have a firm grip on the drill when you're drilling through the holes. Now, if you want to prevent blowout when you're using a hole saw, you can start going through the wood and you can see the pilot bit come out the other side. Now you can stop before the hole saw goes all the way through the board. You can pull the hole saw out, insert it on the other side and drill the hole from the other side. And that way you get a nice clean cut on either side of the board. All right, now hole saws, like all these drill bits, have so many uses. A lot of times these are used for drilling electrical lighting boxes and ceilings. Sometimes I'm using these for drilling the holes for door hardware for the doorknob on doors. Other times I'm using this for plumbing that goes in the back of bathroom sink cabinets, kitchen sink cabinets. Lots of uses for hole saws. <laughs> Okay, next up is what's known as a step bit, and you can see all the steps. Now this bit can drill several different sized holes through mostly thin sheet metal up to an eighth of an inch. Most of the time I'm using a bit like this to go through an electrical box, an electrical panel where I want to add a hole to put a connector like this, like a Romex connector or a conduit connector. And sometimes you want to add a connector to a box 
and there's no hole there. Lots of times I'm doing this with an outdoor box, like a gray Carlon box. I'll just use this blue box as an example. And I can start a hole right here in the center. This is a great bit to have in your toolkit. It goes from 3 sixteenths of an inch to an inch and an eighth hole. Awesome drill bit. All right, up next are countersink bits, and I think these are a must have if you are installing screws. Now, I know these as Fuller Bits. That's the original company that started making these. And notice these bits are tapered to be the same size of the screw that you are installing. So what this is, is this is a countersink to start a hole for a screw. Now this is particularly good if you're using this in wood that is dry, you don't want the wood to crack. This is great to have a little pilot hole before you put your screw in. This also has a countersink here on the top so the head of the screw can sit flush with the surface of your material. I often use this for building cabinets uh, where I want the screw to sit flush with the top of the surface. These are just amazing and a must have in any toolkit. Okay, last but not least is a self-centering bit. I know them as VIX bits and these are just great, especially for installing hinge plates. They come in handy in a multitude of cases, but have you ever tried to put a screw into a hinge plate and you're trying to get it on center, but then it sucks the screw off to the side and it pulls the hinge one direction? Well, that's where this VIX bit comes in. It has a drill bit that is inside of a spring-loaded center. So this keeps the drill bit centered in the hole. So we have this hinge plate, we put our VIX bit in. And see that? That puts that hole very nicely in the center. And then you come with your screw and your hinge stays in place. All right, I hope you guys found this information useful. And if you did, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Uh, and that way, if you subscribe, you can come back here and you can check out more content that I am creating just like this. And please go back into the archives and check out some of my older videos where I've worked on all kinds of different projects. So, all right, I hope you guys are doing great and I'll see you all soon. Right on.